today we are going to go ahead and make our repository, our new setup for our repository. And to do that, the first thing we need to do is we need to go ahead and in our directory we're going to be keeping our new repository setup. We want to go ahead and make a new folder for that. And so using Windows we go ahead and right click and we can go to new and we'll go to folder. And again you want to give this a good name, something that makes sense. So I'm going to call this repo workspace. And the repo workspace is just obviously a name of something. And it's here in my documents folder, so I'll easily be able to have access to it. It is tied directly to my login, so it'll be easily accessed when I log on to the machine. Now the next thing we do is go ahead and go to our workbench. And you can do this directly right here by going right click and go ahead and go to the Taurus, work, Taurus HG and then choose clone. Click on clone, pops up our Taurus workbench window. And this is where you want to go ahead and put in your source directory. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and we're going to copy our source directory from our kiln location. And so we have the ctick.kilnhg, all that stuff that is on your email, plus on that lovely little page. You can get it and just hit in the top right corner, hit copy. And our destination is that current folder. And we're going to go ahead and hit the clone. And it's running. Ask for a password. Go ahead and retype your password in. As you can see, we have that lovely little change to a green check mark. That green check mark indicates this is now being part of the Tortoise SVN, or Tortoise HG, excuse me. And we have in there, I have the code puzzle, I have name source, I have my existing projects that I've already put in there. They're already now part of my workspace. We've got all these projects right here in, and ready to go. So we now had to go ahead and change our Eclipse so it's using the right system. So we're going to ahead and pull Eclipse over. And here's my regular Eclipse. I've got all my pro um, existing projects right here. And it's in the default project folder. The first thing I have to do is set up a new workspace location, pass it to this, I need to switch my workspace. So I go to File, and I go to Switch Workspace, and I go ahead and go to Other. And I browse now to my new workspace that I'm making. So I go ahead and go to Browse, and I go to my directory. There's my repo workspace. And this will now be the workspace we will look for when we start up our Eclipse every single time. So make sure now, from now on that your workspace has that new address on there that you just created with the repo attached to it. And you go ahead and hit OK. We can tell that it is now a new workspace because we get that lovely little welcome screen back up. We go ahead and close that. And notice that the package explorer is empty. We want to make it so we can actually go ahead and get our existing project that we had already had made in there. So we need to go ahead and copy that folder into our new repo folder so we can add that in. So I'm going to go ahead and bring in my folder that has my project on it in my workspace folder, my starting workspace. Oh, there's my default project. And so I copy that project folder just by in here, Windows Explorer, Control C. And I go back to my documents folder and I go to my repo workspace and I have all these existing projects already in there. I right click, go ahead and I paste it. Ba-da-ching, it's now listed inside that documents folder. And now I can go ahead and we can import those existing projects they've already got made and put them as part of our new package explorer. So we click on Eclipse again. Go ahead and we'll maximize this. Right click and I go to import. And then I go under general. I choose the option to existing projects and workspace. Double click on it. And I choose my root directory. And this should be the directory I'm already in for my workspace. I go ahead and browse, make sure I'm in there. And go to my documents right there. And look, I'm inside repo workspace where I just pasted that folder. And look, my projects are already listed there. I have my code puzzle project, my default project, the one I had just made and pasted in there. And then my other projects that I had already imported from the actual repository. So I can have that in there. Go ahead and I select all. They're already selected. And I hit finish. Ba -da -ba -bum. And here are my projects that I already had made. There's name, some Python code. My default project, the one I just made, test.project.ctech, does nothing cool.java. And all my code is now right there. We now need to go ahead and change this so we can push these projects back up to the server as well as commit them here. First thing we have to do is we need to share a project. So click on that, you right click, and we go to project team, we choose share project, and we're setting to Mercurial, and we hit next. And we want to make sure we have this option right here for use existing repository in the parent directory. Hit finish. We note right now it's now being it's shared as a project, it's got a information on here, this is which version it is, information for the current status of it inside Mercurial. And so now that project's been shared, the next step we have to do for a project is commit the project. So we right click on the project, we go back down to team and we choose the commit option. And you have to make sure you put a commit message in there. It won't work without it. So, And the commit message should explain what's been added or changed. This should be something that explains what's going on with that current commit that you're putting in there. 
So just a quick little thing. And again, like it says in the notes, you should do this about once every save or so, so you don't have to worry about losing any data and have that information there. And this is a way of keeping track of what you're working throughout your code. And this is a process you'll do on most regular businesses as well. And so this is first upload. I want to go ahead and I'm going to select everything on there. And that just gets everything set up. I really can actually ignore the dot settings folder. That's fine, the dot project and stuff. But for right now, we'll just go ahead and set it up. And we go ahead and say OK. It's now committed. We can see it's committed because we have that change right here. The icon goes from the little star to the yellow tube. That means it's been imported properly or committed properly. And we have now the next thing to step on that is to push our project. And to push, we right click again, easy peasy. And we go down to team, we go up here and we choose push. And our repository location, we have our username and password. We go ahead and hit next. Get out and change sets as we can see right here. And there's that revision. This is the 10th version because we've made the changes on that. We're going to go ahead and hit finish. And that has been pushed up there. We don't have any error messages that's now in there. Go ahead and bring over our repository. We see it right here. We're going to delete this repository. I'm going to go ahead and hit F5. And there's that first upload of new code that is going. So we've got that in there. We can go ahead and we can take a look at that. And hey, look, there's the class path of project. And here's that project test.package all that information, and it only uploaded the new information that we did. All the stuff that was already there is still there. We can also look at this via files, and here is that default project. Here's the source folder, the test, the project, and ctech, and does nothing cool.java. Again, we can see it this way. The first time we want to go ahead and get your information from the repository, you'll just do the standard clone. That will go ahead and pull it all right down and put it into that new blank directory that you just made like we did just a few bits ago. However, when you want to go ahead and you want to update your code from the code that's already up there, we have to do what's called a pull. And that's where we actually request the information from the repository to bring it back down to our current existing repository. So to do that, we're going to make a change online just so we can see that. And so we'll edit this file so we can actually see that we're making a change right here. String temp, we'll save that. But it shows that we're adding that single line up there. We have to make a commit message on this, just like we're committing on our system at home. So that change has now been made separately from this. This would be like we made it at home on our other machine. We want to go ahead and get it back down. And we want to get that update. We're going to go ahead back to our default project. And we're going to right click again, magic power. And we're going to go ahead and go down to team. And we are going to go ahead and click on poll. Okay, automatically pulls up what our repository we're looking from, has our information already put in there, and that lovely little checkbox right here for where it says update after pull, let's go ahead and get the information so we can put that together, and we'll go ahead and hit next. And there's that change set, this notices that it's 11, we were on 10 right here, but this one's 11, so it's shown that there has been a change, and go ahead and hit finish, and we want to go ahead and rebase on the tip, and has already put that information right in there. Let's go ahead and try that again. We're going to add a change, a string, temp string, and so the commit message, we took out that default value of string temp, we're changing it to private string temp string, removed, commit that change, and we go ahead, we have that lovely little value right there, and we're going to go ahead and pull that code into our project, so we're going to go over here to this, and so it has an existing code of the string temp, we're going to close that just to make sure we don't have anything that we're confusing ourselves with, right click down to team, go up to poll. Again on poll we check to make sure URL is correct, should be already there. Our username and password should already be saved as well. And we're updating our code after our poll. And we're going to go hit next. Notice again how we have a change, 12 from 11. And we're going to choose merge our heads this time, merging with that. Say OK. Notice we're at 13. And private string, temp string. We are already there. So it took it in, it properly merged it, and so we have that lovely information. We can go ahead and take a look at that right here in this as well. We can go up to our files and go to our history. And here is that removed line of code. And so we got our history. We can remove line of code. And we took off that temp string line, replaced it with a private string temp string, making it more correct. Okay, and so it shows the parent cast, the change set, all that information. And so we have that information right there so we can pull it as well as get it back off. And so we now have our current version of code all right there.